How can we weigh a star? We can use models to estimate the mass of a star, but how can we fundamentally measure it without a model? Well, stars are massive objects that warp the space around them, and we can use this fact to measure their mass. Scientists have just demonstrated this on the dead remnants of a star, a white dwarf. So how did they measure a white dwarf's mass? How heavy was it? And does this tell us anything about what is happening inside of these stars? Let's discuss it. A white dwarf star forms after a low mass star, a star that has a mass that is less than eight times heavier than our sun, undergoes a supernova. After all of the mass has been ejected and the nuclear fuel has been spent, there remains a hot ball of material that is no longer undergoing nuclear fusion, but is so hot that it still emanates light just from black bloody radiation. We know that there are a lot of white dwarfs out there, but they are hard to see, and that's hard to study. They are small and not particularly bright, and as such, other stars that are nearby can mask the signal from them. We have many theories about what occurs inside white dwarfs and other star remnants like neutron stars. But to verify these theories, we need a reliable measurement of their mass. This is where scientists have used the curvature of space-time to measure the mass of a white dwarf. Light travels on what is called null geodesics, which means that light always travels in a straight line in space. But while light moves in a straight line, space is not always flat. Space-time bends and curves around mass, and a white dwarf is heavy enough to curve space in a measurable way. This means that it is possible to measure the mass of a white dwarf by measuring the curvature of space around it. To do this, scientists have tracked the position of a star that traveled behind a white dwarf using the Hubble telescope. As the star moved behind the white dwarf, they were able to measure where the star appeared to be and compare this to where the star should be. The difference in these two positions tells us how much the light has curved around the white dwarf from the space-time curvature, and thus how heavy the white dwarf is, which in this case was around half the mass of our sun. This was a pretty interesting method, but did we actually learn anything from it? Unfortunately, not a lot, but it is likely we will learn more in the future. One thing that we did learn was that the current theory of white dwarf composition is accurate for this star. After a supernova, these white dwarfs are expected to comprise mostly of carbon and oxygen. Depending on the size of the star before it went supernova, there may be a thin layer of hydrogen on the outside, but mostly we consider these stars to be just carbon and oxygen. In this state, the matter is compressed so much that it forms what is called an electron degenerate core, meaning that the inward forces of gravity is balanced by the outward pressure of an electron degenerate gas. This is a result of the Pauli exclusion principle. As a consequence, the mass of a white dwarf is proportional to its radius with a known relation. In this case, the mass measured confirms this relation, meaning that this white dwarf has a very small layer of hydrogen on the surface that doesn't contribute greatly to its mass. So while we didn't learn a lot from this white dwarf, Using this technique on other stars may help us to understand more finely what is going on inside of them. Astrophysics is a very interesting subject, and there is still so much that we don't know about the universe. Check out this video where I discuss a recent claim that black holes are the cosmological source of dark energy.